Hello, welcome to Cloud Developer. Today, I'm gonna make a little website on React and I'm gonna host it on AWS Amplify. And with this, you will be able to see how Amplify can actually help you to publish easily and without hassle any website that you make on a framework such as React, or such as Angular, such as Vue, etc. And we're gonna be using uh, GitHub to accomplish this. So the couple things that you need for this video is an account with AWS. If you do not have an account, please check the links in the description. There's a tutorial there to make an account. And if you don't have a GitHub account, you also need to make an account with GitHub. If you have those already, that's all you need for this video so we can get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a repository. So I'm gonna click on repositories here on my first, on my main GitHub page. I'm gonna make a new one. And you can call it whatever you want, but uh, obviously you wanna have something uh, relevant to what you're doing. AWS, Amplify, React page. Okay, copy and paste that in the description. I like to initialize with a readme and then create a repository. And once, that, once this is completed, you need to copy this link here, this path. And I'm gonna open my terminal. Now you need to find a place to put uh, this folder, the new folder that you have created, this repository. And I have here, one says YouTube Cloud Dev. So I'm just gonna do CD space and then drag and drop this folder, enter. And now I am inside this folder, which right now only have this uh, all projects folder. Right, and then what you're going to do is to git clone paste that uh, path, and this is gonna create a folder in here, and this is where we're gonna be creating our page in React. So I'm gonna minimize my terminal, and now I'm going to open this folder in VS Code. So if you don't have VS Code, it's free, you can just go install it. It's, to me, as you can see, I have, um, Atom, I have Sublime Text, I have used them all, but I always come back to VS Code, I really like it, I like all the extensions, it makes everything really easy and streamlined. Okay, so I'm in and I'm going to open a new terminal here from the menu. Great, and I'm going to make a basic React page with the following command, npx create-react app and you can call it whatever you want. Normally people call it my app, so let's do that. This is gonna take about three minutes or so because you're downloading and creating hundreds, no, thousands of files. So I'll be back when this is done. All right, it's done. Once you can read here, happy hacking, it means you have uh, completed the installation. I'm gonna do something here, open your folder uh, that it was created and I'm gonna switch the view what I like to do is the, all the files that were created inside this my app, I'm just gonna move them one level here and I'm gonna overwrite the readme replace. And now the my app folder is empty and I can get rid of it. I find this way works better with Amplify and I like it seems a little bit more flat, more streamlined to me. Once that's done, I'm just gonna close the project once in VS Code and just reopen it again. So you can drag and drop it and we should be able to start coding. And if I expand the SRC folder, you can see a bunch of files that were created by React. And if you wanna see what it looks like, the you know template page, the page, the boilerplate page, you can do npm start, and it's gonna compile all this code and it's gonna show it to you in the localhost 3000 by default. Just give it a minute. And this is it. So if you can see this uh, spinning logo, it means that you're in business. All right, so now every change that we do to our code is gonna be automatically reflected here because we're gonna leave this uh, local host executing constantly. So, but because we need the terminal, we can open a second terminal here with this button, split terminal. And now I can work on this terminal as well, leaving this one intact. Now, the next thing that we might want to do is to go to the app.js folder and just don't worry about that, right? And I'm gonna get rid of most of this code because we don't need it. In fact, I'm just gonna get rid from header to closing header, right? If I save, you, you might see here 
that is now a white page. Immediately refresh onto a white page. So let's start doing what we did last time in the HTML version of this exercise that we hosted on S3 on a past video. Today we're using React, so I'm gonna be using JSX. And it was really simple, it was just, hello, my name is Carlos. And then I'm gonna put an H2. Welcome to my React page on Amplify. Mm -hmm. And then we also added uh, the clock. So the current time is, and last time you used new date, uh, the, Java, the JavaScript um, command to get the date from the system. We're gonna use a library because now we're on React and a library that I found useful is this one. It's called React Live Clock. And in order to install it, you just need to copy this line here. And we're gonna use the terminal, the second terminal that we have down here. So we're gonna copy and paste that here, enter. And this library takes a couple minutes to install and I'm gonna come back when that's done. All right, it's ready to go. And now with that library installed, I can get rid of this line and I need to import that library. And how to do that, we come here and in the documentation, you can see that you need to add this line, import clock. So I'm just gonna add that. And then to actually display the clock on the particular zone that you're at, if you will, uh, you add this line in here. And now if we save and check on our local host, we can see that it's actually working. So my name is Carlos, my page on Amplify, the current time is such and such. So it works, all right? So now we have a very basic page on React. And if you wanna make it look a little bit better, like we did um, on the HTML CSS version, go to index CSS and we can add a couple uh, things in here to make it look a little bit better. So H1 color blue, and I'm gonna change the H2. You can modify font, style, italic, and um, I don't know, H3, we can put, let's change the color. This is completely optional, guys, which so is quickly just, and I think the background, uh, the background, we can change it in the body, which is up here. So background color, silver, we did last time. So save, check that that worked. Ooh, the orange doesn't look good at all. Let's just put red, save that. That's a bit better, okay. So we're gonna leave it at that. And now from here, we're gonna go onto your AWS console. So log in onto your AWS account. And this is the first page that you should see once you log in. And if you don't see Amplify right up there, we can go to Amplify through this uh, search bar, click on it. All right, so that's ready to go. And before we can actually use Amplify, we need to push the changes that we did onto our repository, because if you have a look, our repository is still pretty much empty. So what we need to do is, I'm gonna clear the console and I'm gonna git status. And you can see all these files in red, it means files that you have created that are not in your repository. So we can git add all of them to stage them and then git commit dash M quotes and let's call it initial commit, closing quotes, enter. Okay, and then git push origin master to finally push it onto our repository. And it shouldn't take very long. Okay, it's done. And you can confirm if you go to your uh, repository page and reload the page. Now you can see it's called initial commit 19 seconds ago. All these files are now there in the master branch. Now we're going to connect this master branch to AWS. And, and this is how a GitHub can work not only as a version control, uh, which means that if you're working on a piece of code and you're making progress, you wanna be saving versions of it because if at some point you break your code, something happens and you don't know how to fix it, you can go back in time, so to speak, and get to a version that is working and continue from there. So you have to start all over again. Um, but in this case, no, it is uh, not only 
functional for that, we can also connect it to uh, Amplify. So I'm gonna connect app from here. I'm gonna choose GitHub. And there's many other version control systems like Bitbucket, GitLab. AWS has its own GitHub, so to speak. It's called Code Commit. And I'm gonna continue. The first time you use GitHub in AWS, you need to link it. And it's gonna ask you to essentially log in to GitHub within AWS Amplify. So in this page, you should see a, a, an area for you to, um, to type your password. So just do that. And once that the authorization has been successful, you should see a page like this. And now that the authorization has been successful, in here you're gonna choose the branch that you want to, no, the repository first, which is this one, the one we just created, React page, AWS Amplify, and then which branch? In our case, we just have the master branch. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. So let's continue, connect to your master branch. I'm gonna leave all the settings default, so you continue next. Uh, and it already knows it's a React application and I'm gonna save and deploy. This is gonna take about three to five minutes. And you can see the process, the progress of all this process in the following screen. So just give it a second here. What it's doing, it's gonna start provisioning all the, the resources that your page needs to run. And you can see that process here. So right now it's provisioning and then it's gonna go into building and then deploying and then verifying that it works. And once all these four steps are completed, you're gonna be able to click on this link and see your page hosted on Amplify. So let's give a moment and I'll be back when this is done. All right, now the whole line went green, everything was checked. So now I can click on this link and we can see that the website we just made in React is now hosted and live on this link, such and such Amplify. So you have successfully hosted your page on Amplify. Uh, cool, well, now imagine that you wanna make a change on your website. How do you do that? Well, if we come back to our code, uh, I'm gonna add a new line here at the bottom of the page, and I'm gonna add a random, a random image from this, uh, this service called Pixum. So what you need to do is to add this line, HTTPS, uh, pixum.photos, and then slash, and then in here you put the size of the photos. I'm gonna put 600 by 400. Okay, and they close the image tag. And I'm gonna save. And if I check on my a local host, this is my local host. Now I have this picture of a beach somewhere. If I reload the page, it's gonna draw a different photo. All right, so this is a new change because this is not in, in Amplify yet. So how do you put this change in Amplify? So supposing that you're happy with that and you wanna publish that change, it's very simple. What you do, I like always to start with status and there is a change in app.js, yes it is. So we do the same process as git add all of it, git commit dash m, a comment a relevant to the change you did, added pick some link, enter git push origin master. I'm pushing all these to the master repository. And once that's done, we can check on my repository, let's reload that. And there should be, so 18 seconds ago, added Pixum link, so the master branch has been updated. And as soon as the master branch is updated, Amplify notices that because it's linked to it. And so it started to provision again. It started this process all over again to provision, build, deploy, and verify the new version of your website. Now this link still takes you to the page that originally we uploaded. But once this is done again, so I'm gonna have to wait for, for it to finish, you should be able to see the changes and it's gonna look exactly like it does in your local host. So let's give it a minute again and I'll be back. All right, it's done. So let's click on this link, see what happens. Hopefully, yeah, we get a random picture now. And as you can see through the link, I am in Amplify. So we have successfully updated our website from our terminal, essentially. So you don't have to mess with your GitHub repository directly, everything is done through this terminal. Every time you uh, push changes to the master branch, Amplify is gonna notice it and it's gonna reload, it's gonna rebuild your new version and that's it. 
All right, let's make this a little bit more interesting. Remember uh, CI, CD, and the fact that I was talking about having different branches. So imagine that now this branch is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna add a new change here. This is master branch. And I'm going to save that. And I'm going to do the three commands, git add, git commit, and git push. And while all this is doing and updating on the back, on the back end, also amplify. I'm gonna create a new branch and I'm gonna do a git branch staging and I'm gonna do git checkout staging. So now I am switched to branch staging. Now I'm on a different branch. So if I change something here, it's not gonna go onto the master branch and it's, that means it's not gonna go onto amplify. So let's change this staging branch. Let's uh, add this new change. Let's do git add dot git commit minus m minus m added line to staging and git push origin staging. All right, so hopefully this is gonna send this change onto the staging branch. And now we have two branches with a little bit of a difference, which is here, the staging branch text and the master branch text here. Uh, if I go to my GitHub repository and refresh, you'll be able to see that now we have the master branch and the staging branch. And what we can do now is that we can go back to amplify and the master branch is being built again. So wh what I'm gonna do is go back to all apps and I'm gonna connect an app to the same uh, steps that we did before, GitHub, and this time, so select the same repository, React page, AWS, Amplify, and this time choose the staging branch. Do next. And essentially I'm gonna have now two, I'm gonna leave everything as default like last time. And I'm gonna have two live links. One is the master branch, one is the staging branch. And why would you want to do that? Normally in web development, you like to have an in-between. Uh, with uh, in the production site is the one that is facing the public, that is live, that is the important one. You want you don't want any bugs on that site. So in order to make change to that one, normally what we do is you test every change you want on a staging branch. You want to see how it looks live, test for bugs, and once all those changes are approved and everything looks okay, now you can change and pass those changes onto the master branch. So by having two branches now, this is gonna be the staging link. So I'll have to wait for all this to go through, but you pretty much get the idea of what's gonna happen. I'm gonna click on it, even though it's not gonna work yet. But in this link, eventually, I'm gonna have the version of this website that says staging branch. So I'm gonna have this link and this link with different versions of the website. And I'm gonna be able to test before I actually send onto the master branch. So this is a really good way for you to have, and it, it, not only it's a staging and master, you can have as many branches deployed onto AWS Amplify. So this is gonna help you tremendously. If you're working on a team, if you wanna see what every team's, every branch looks like at a certain point of time, you can easily deploy it and see if the changes uh, are looking the same as in your localhost. Sometimes there's a little bit difference between what it looks like in localhost than what it looks like online. Sometimes because just life is like that. Um, so this is gonna be a very helpful tool to, to visualize all those changes. All right, so I'm gonna let it finish. Uh, I think you can imagine what's gonna look like. So please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you, you're now able to deploy your apps uh, that you made on React or Angular or Vue onto GitHub and then onto AWS. So you can now understand better the concept of continuous integration, continuous delivery, which is what we we're doing here. The concept of having different branches hosted in different locations. And then until you're happy with the staging branch, you can put it on the master branch and so on. All right, well, this is Carlos for Cloud Developer. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.